Hello, I'm Llewellyn Falco, and today we're going to talk about locking down legacy code. So to do that, the first thing we're going to need is a piece of legacy code. And for this example, I have a battleship program. You can see over here that it's basically you're just creating boards and you're placing chips on it in different places. So we're going to create a locking test to lock that down. And a locking test is a slightly different procedure than a regular test. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a function that can sort of enact a scenario. All right, so it's going to return an object. And what the scenario we're going to look at is place ship on board. So the first thing we're going to need to do that is we're going to need to create a new board. And we're going to want to hold on to that board. After we have that board, we're going to want to place the ship on the board. And it's going to need an x coordinate and a y coordinate and a ship and an orientation. And then we just simply need to return that board. Now to make this a workable piece of code, we're going to need a parameter for our x, and we're going to need a parameter for our y, and of course we're going to need a parameter for our ship and orientation. Alright, so now we've sort of created the ability to do a scenario. Next we need to sort of have a lot of scenarios to do. So there we're going to create our actual test. And we'll just call it locking test, or test lock. Let's say lockdown. So we're going to use the legacy approvals, and we're going to do a lockdown. And then we need a callback object. This is because you don't really have closures. So in this case, this is the object that we want to call back. And the method that we're going to want to call is place ship on board. And now we need to give it sort of what are the arguments to give a call for. So the first thing is we need an x. Now the board is a, a 0 to 10, right? But we want to go a little bit farther than that. So let's create a range starting at negative 1 and ending at 11. And that should be a lot of valid integers to throw at x. Y is going to be sort of the same thing. Again, we're going to create a range. We're going to start a little bit before. We're going to start, stop a little bit after. Now we need some ships. Now ships are an enumeration, so they're extremely easy. I can just say, give me all the different ships. And the same goes for orientation. Orientation is also an enumeration, so I can just say, give me all the values. And now I've created my test. When I execute this test, it's going to throw all the different possible combinations there. You'll see it spits out around 8,000 lines of the different scenarios. Everything from the very beginning of our negative 1, negative 1 battleship across to the very last combination of 1111 11 aircraft carrier down. But we don't even have to look at this test because it's legacy code. And therefore, this whatever it produces is the spec. So all I have to do is go here and say approve. Now that I've approved it, I can run it again, and I have a passing test. And in fact, if I run this under coverage, we can see that I've achieved 97.3% coverage in just these three minutes. And if we go and do a quick scroll through here, we can see that there's actually only one line of a scenario where I did not have an intersecting ship, so it never returned false early. So, here we are locking down legacy code. We did it with approval tests. And I'm Llewellyn Falco, and I approved this demo.